Right guys, I just thought I would uh, I would try something different. Uh, I've obviously got another fencing job tomorrow. This is Sunday night. Uh, and I'm just going through the usual routine. I do this every night. Uh, of loading my van for in preparation for tomorrow. I've just loaded up this uh, fence post in here. I'll show you the area that I've got um, for that. So we'll, we'll take a walk. We'll take a walk over. And so what I try to do, I try to have at least maybe six or seven jobs lined up. Yeah. Or the first six or seven jobs, I, ha I need to have all the materials here on site so I can spend the next you know, two to three weeks knowing that everything's on site. And I just work that way. Just clear through all this and then reorder the materials for the next jobs. I find that works best. I don't like the hassle of waiting or relying on delivery companies, you know, delivering materials to site. And this creates its own problems, but I do prefer to be in control. That's where we just came from. There's my van back into the sort of workshop area. I'll wait to get loaded. So customers probably don't realise that you're you're doing this, you know. This is a Sunday night, but I do this every night uh, before I go out for the job. So, you know, I think, I think it's just turn up in the morning and, you know, everything's there. But there's quite a lot of preparation goes into every job. So, here we go. So the particular job I'm going to be taking you on, it's a... I think it's a 20 meter hit and miss fence, six foot fence with a gate. Uh, it's what I do. Um, the first job tomorrow is always, you know, rip down the old fence and install uh, the fence posts. So that's us loaded, ready for the morning. We'll just get the rest of the tools in and hopefully we'll, we'll see you on site tomorrow. Right guys, here's the fence that's going to be replaced. Uh, I'm voicing this over by the way, just it was quite difficult to talk on the day. Uh, due to neighbours and stuff, but anyway, this is the fence that will be getting uh, taken out. So here's the reciprocating saw, um, this is one of the main tools I use to take uh, fences apart. This is the Dewalt Flex Volt version, which is, you know, really heavy duty, really good for the job. You can see the big trench here, I've had to dig right along there when I've taken the fence out. It's basically to get the levels uh, correct, and um, that will become apparent later on in the video. Stick my photo there. Um, here's all the fence posts in. They're all set two feet deep. Two bags of post crete each post. So they're in place. Here's the rails now. You'll see that kickboard down there. I'll explain what that's for later in the video. But all the posts, all the rails are in position. So that gives us a good basis to fit all the, the slats. So we'll start fitting the, the slats on the, this, this side of the fence to start with and then the reverse side. And as I'll explain later in the video. Some local wildlife just sitting. I noticed all these ducklings uh, just at the bottom of where I'm installing the fence. So it's one of the perks of the job. So here's the slats. and um, This is me started fitting the slats. Um, this was at the end of day two, I think. Uh, right, guys, Tuesday night. Just finished making a gate. This is the kind of gate that I always make for a hit and miss fence. Um, you can make a gate to match the fence like the you know slats uh, backwards and forwards you know like the same style as the fence but i think it look terrible um so I, I think this is a neater sort of design so it's basically a closed board gate with slats fitted on the front just to close the gaps so you'll see that when i fit it tomorrow right so here's the reverse side of the gate so you'll see how it's braced this is quite a narrow gate so you can get away with two braces yeah, so they don't go over 45 degrees. Um, if you want to see how a video how to brace a gate, check there and I'll put a link in. Uh, but basically that's the rear side of the gate. I've also just been loading my van for tomorrow. I've already fitted about 60, um, as you've probably seen earlier in this video. So the plan is to fit these front and back tomorrow, to fit the gate, and then fit the cap and rails, which I've got up there. Right, we'll see you tomorrow, guys.
Right yeah. guys, that's the first layer of boards on, so this is what you call the face side of the fence. Yeah, and this will be a hit and miss fence, so now we're going to put boards on the back of the fence, just basically do the same, but have them offset so they're covering the gaps. Um, and that, that's what gives you the, the privacy. So this is where the gate's going to go. I took the measurements uh, yesterday, obviously made the gate last night, so we'll get that in today. Um, and here's down the back of the fence. So basically we'll be adding slats at the back of here all the way along, just to create privacy. So I'll get that done and then we'll move on to the next stage. So here I'm just trimming slats uh, where, where the fence meets against the fence post at the back side of the fence. Um, I use a track saw, it's just quicker and more efficient, you know, than setting up the circular saw. So once you cut these, you need to coat them with preserver, which I'm doing here. Um, that just protects the, you know, the, the wood that you've opened up. Yeah, so you can see the post there, so obviously you can't get a full board in there, so you have to rip them down. Uh, so what I do is try and keep the, the gap the same as all these other ones. Try and keep that gap the same, rip it to the size. That keeps it pretty neat. So that's now done all the way along. So the next job is to put the cap and rail on the top. You can see I've started there. So here's the first bit of cap and I've just re uh, placed it on. All that is is a bit of weather capping, so it basically protects the top of the boards from the rain. It also finishes fences off as well, gives it a neater finish. So basically, get this along the top, screw it all in place. Take it right along to the end where the gate's going to go. And the next job will be to hang the gate and then you know, trim it all in, so we'll do that next. Right, it's a capping just about on, so you can see the capping at the top. I've got a little bit to finish off here. I'm just waiting to be putting the gate in now, so... That's where the gate will go, I've just been clearing that area just to give it somewhere to open out onto. You can see the fence running down there. So we'll get the gate on now. Right folks, that's it finished. Six foot hit and miss fence with capping. Right along there. Gate up at the end there. Um, the only issue here really was this patio was dropped down slightly, so I've had to put a kickboard in there to raise the fence in order to keep the top line level. So basically kickboard there, raise the fence up and then basically dig a trough right along this uh, flower bed here. This is all, all to keep the fence top line level and keep it with the same height as the fence there. So here's an access gate here. There's the gate right at the end of the fence. There's the fence running down there. So the gate just takes you out to this box. It's a bit of waste ground, really. A little river running here. There's the back of the fence. I can't really get down there to film it from over there, but you can you get the idea. the gate. So it's lockable from the inside obviously so nobody can get through from that direction. You can see the run of the fence here, we had to channel it through there. Created a bit more work. This was a raised bed so I had to gouge it out. 